Welcome to Conversations About Money. Today, we're actually going to have a conversation about money and purpose. And this conversation is with Holly Woods. Holly, welcome. Uh, we met, we've met a few years ago, and I have such a feeling, and whenever we're together, of how our paths cross, how our work is very aligned, although we come at it from different angles, me coming more from the angle of money, you coming more from the angle of purpose. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and perhaps why you feel that you're landing in this conversation? Mm, beautiful, Sarah. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, so I call myself a purpose activator, among many other things. I'm a, a scientist and a practitioner and a a guide, um, an entrepreneur. I help build things, products, and businesses for people. Um, and I came about living into, you know, helping people define purpose because I feel like we all need to express the version of ourselves, our full selves, um, on the planet, especially at this time, both to have uh, internal fulfillment and joy and happiness and but also abundance but al and also to have more impact and I know that each of us has a very nuanced unique expression of ourselves that can be brought into the world in a way that creates a business and you know money um, and so I, I feel like we're having this conversation because I have been I have struggled in the past with money issues myself, but I also now help people define and articulate and build the fullest expression of themselves so that they can live lives of meaning and purpose and um, contribute economically and make a difference in the world all at the same time. It's possible. And, and it's way more satisfying, isn't it, when, when the money piece is working as, and the purpose piece is working. And we right. probably both meet many people who are struggling with the purpose and struggling with the money and want right. both of those. Right. They, they go hand in hand. There's hardly a distinction. You know, once you find that thing which wants to be birthed from you and is your greatest gift, your greatest expression in the world, it's almost money sort of naturally follows. I, I know, you know, a while back, the phrase, do what you love and the money will follow. And that was just a little bit too simple and didn't quite work in, in its original conception. But I, I do believe that when we do what we can't not do, what, what really inspires us and our soul calls us to do, and we express that in the world in a way through bold action and making contribution, then it really, it really does happen that money follows, money just shows up which, you know, you and I are both testament to, so. So I want to take this conversation in a direction to explore stuff that maybe we haven't um, talked about a lot, because we're about to jump into a conversation which is fascinating and people will be endly, endlessly hooked into about, you know, the refinements and the nuances of purpose and money. But I think there's something really interesting happening at the moment that I'm feeling, and I get the sense that you're feeling that even with all the things that we have known and explored over the last, especially over the last decade, maybe mm -hmm. around purpose and around money, mm -hmm. it feels like there's a lot changing at the moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm having to change in the way that I approach mm -hmm. this whole topic. And I feel like you're mm -hmm. also having that experience of needing to change it's yeah. almost like we're needing to change the narrative we're needing to change the scope of what we talk about um yes. in these areas and that all the things we used to talk about are very fascinating but they're not they're not quite where it's at anymore what are you finding i think if we share a little bit what we're finding yeah. that would get us <laughs> off to an interesting start have you been in my dreams <laughs> <laughs> like sarah how did you end up there? Um, yes, in fact, I am really in the thick of it right now, trying to try and like, what is it that's trying to come out of me? Because the current version of me, which, you know, works, I'm still do one on one work and, you know, really effective at helping people define, et cetera, et cetera, build businesses, products, go out in the world. But oh my gosh, there's something else. And I'm, I'm starting to get some clarity about it, but it's still slightly undefined. And 
I know that it is the version of me that's emerging next. So I believe purpose is that which lives in us. And there's always another version that emerges as we evolve and develop. So naturally, of course, as the world has shifted and our understanding of what is happening globally has shifted, that there's going to be another version of me and my work that also shifts. And that's true for all of us. Um, so I have some inklings about it, but I'm not terribly clear. I don't know if you mean to share, <laughs> like, uh, you know, back of the paper napkin kinds of things. <laughs> well, I think that's really cool in itself, because um, one of the things that people often torture themselves with around purpose is that it's supposed to be crystal clear all the time. And that absolutely not um, my experience. I mean, I would say over the last few months, both in re with regard to purpose and money, I have this really strong sense of having to grow up um, a whole oh. lot more than I thought that I'd already grown up. And I don't have this sense for me alone. I have this sense for all of us, and especially mm -hmm. people who are in this kind of dialogue. I feel that before the focus of the work really was about me and my purpose and my expression in the world and you and yours and kind of really cutting our teeth on that to the to this to the extent that we could feel really strong and grounded and know what we're doing and even if you're somebody who feels like I'm not fully strong and grounded in that I think still that was the attempt it was mm -hmm. to was to kind of live my purpose in the world mm -hmm. and I feel so strongly now this sense that we have to look much more clearly at how do we do that it's even because it's very on the edge it's not always easy to find the right words for it because most of the words I use they, they sound old and they're trying to describe something new um, and I often have that experience these days but it's I think we have a global awareness at a level that we've never really had before of certain challenges mm -hmm. that are so huge that they mostly feel overwhelming if you look at climate or if you look at conflict and we see the conflict for potential to fly up in the world spring up if you look at the pandemic experience whatever your interpretation of that it's been a very bruising experience for people mm -hmm. but what's interesting about all of those things is they have a global focus at a level I don't think that we've ever had before mm -hmm. and so what I'm experiencing is this sense of a need to express my purpose and bring money into it um, in a way that um, wow it's hard. okay I'm, I'm listening I'm gonna <laughs> I come yeah. up with the words, I'll throw them in, but it sounds what I what I want to say sounds so trite, but it's not. Um, it's kind of like that directly addresses real problems mm -hmm. um, in a meaningful way. So that it's not just me satisfying my own need for purpose and joy and fulfillment. And it's not just me going out and being an activist and saying, I've got to solve the problems of the world. Yeah. It's me bringing those two together in such a grounded way that my work naturally not only becomes part of that contribution, but I experience that as well. Because I could say anyone who is doing anything that's good, we're automatically, of course, we're contributing. Right. But there's a sense of the way that we're able to connect with each other and know that inside ourselves that feels significant to me because it, it gives more joy. It gives a greater sense of commitments to doing things that are sometimes extremely hard mm -hmm. so i'm in total agreement like 100 percent, 142 percent so i can say um could we do 142 and a half yeah because you know the, the answer to the questions of the universe oh, of course yeah <laughs> i know but that's that's already old we've got to go a little a little um, beyond <laughs> so I, in the last five years especially, I have mostly been working with entrepreneurs and visionaries who do see their purpose as a global or multidimensional contribution. Um, I, you know, I work with all kinds of people and I guess my sweet spot really has been working with people who have that transpersonal perspective so that, you know, their longing really is a representation of what they know they are here to contribute 
at this time. And that's a good chunk of the folks that I love working with um, because that's my own impetus is to help humanity. You know, well, I, I have a purpose and it's lived in me my whole lifetime. An evolved version is to, you know, take us all, help take us all to the next level. And even more, just what's, I think what's trying to come out of me relative to what you just said is, is that in order to do what you described, we have to, we must learn the capacities to fly the ship, fly the, fly the ship. Um. <laughs> That's actually quite good, I think. It's it like actually, flying and, and, and actually it's like a huge, great yeah, ship. You know, and it's, I say that a lot. really can't fly. <laughs> I, I say that a lot. So it must be what I really mean to say. We're learning to fly the ship while we're driving it. And because we're, we don't, you know, nothing is at all what we expected, not that it ever was, you know, that really never existed. We just pretended, but that we are literally now fully aware, cognizant now, no, I don't have a clue where I'm going. And I, this is scary as crap. And I'm just going to have to figure out how to take one step forward, knowing that that step has nothing underneath it. And so some of what I, I believe the capacities I'm bringing on in a purposeful way is how to how to build those capacities to be ready and willing and able to make quick instantaneous you know sourced have sourced awarenesses make decisions on the spot because the breadcrumbs are going to be minuscule you know i've i've been following and teaching breadcrumbs, bread, my breadcrumb theory for a long time, living into purpose. But I think it's, you know, we're talking stardust now. Um, and, and so how do you follow the stardust? That's just going to be right in front of us so that we can live into this grander version of ourselves. I don't know if I'm making this too big. Totally. That's really interesting because I often also talk about breadcrumbs. Somebody asked me the other day actually to explain what I meant by breadcrumbs. So oh, that's funny. nice to <laughs> share that one. Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, this thing about us really recognizing now that we don't know and being able to say that if you think of how we have been taught entrepreneurship over the last yeah, 30 yeah. years we always had to know right. we always had to be the expert who had all the answers and that's got us into some really dodgy situations i think mm -hmm. yeah. so how to be on that real edge looking for those breadcrumbs i think one of the important capacities which i find very fascinating is actually how do you so you see this that you see let's say a, a speck of spardust spardust <laughs> stardust <laughs> we're making up new words in the process yeah and then well yes because then you actually also we have to interpret that as human beings so right. the sourced information we receive i've been around a lot of that my own but also a lot of other people right. and i see that one of the really important capacities is our ability to interpret that at a human level and actually turn that into something real. I've seen people who've created whole businesses from stardust essentially that never happened because they could never ground them. And it was devastating because they said, well, I received this from source or, or whatever their particular version of that was. Right. And it doesn't make sense. Like how come it didn't work? Now, I don't really want to get into that conversation. Right. I think what's interesting is how do we follow these breadcrumbs, these, um, dusts of star um <laughs> how do we source information that probably even enables us to see those little specks of dust how do we interpret that how do we ground that and turn it into living breathing businesses or we're maybe part of businesses because in the end if we're going to bring money into it and if we're bringing solutions in mm -hmm. we're talking about business at some right. level or other right. We are so those capacities. I think we've we've had the we've had the kind of um, dating part of that. It's like wow, this is so cool. You're the best thing since sliced bread. It's so amazing to be able to source information and see breadcrumbs and simultan um, simultaneities and synchronicities and all of that stuff is really beautiful. We've 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 had the romance, but now it's like the babies are happening, and. Um, there's 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 a lot of stuff to be done 
um, I think there's a lot of us needing to do a lot of things that are this very practical. And yet we need to have the connection with the stardust and the source and all of that all the time in a world that doesn't necessarily recognize that language very easily. Yeah, and I, I think that's right. And for me, it's it's about, I, I'm, I don't know, in the last several months, I'm now fully committed to um, no longer being in denial of how it really works, like, you know, how it works for me anyway, and how I see it works and how I actually cause these sh transformations in my clients and they build businesses is that it really is sourced and um, what is available to me and my rational mind and embodied form is just one form of a data collection system and it's much bigger than that you know even Otto Scharmer of um, the Presencing Institute is now doing global moves with 20,000 people who are a part of hearing the language of you know we get stuff from out there <laughs> beyond us and yes. so acknowledging I just did a workshop yesterday for a small business development center group in central Colorado. And I was having this conversation with a room full of entrepreneurs and they were like, wow, I can't believe you're talking about this stuff in a business meeting. I think we just need to stop pretending that we don't know how to do this and that it isn't our best way to gather it's, you know, gather the information, make efficient decisions and then move take very practical bold steps it's absolutely must include action and practical and tactical and strategic um you know that's how you build products is how you build business it's how you build partnerships but but to do it you know from this frame of what's inside here and our linear rational mind no longer is we never did work and we just pretended that it did and we built a lot of stuff that was, you know, earlier, earlier form of humanity. And now we're not there. We, we need the other thing that is envisioning solutions, not even envisioning solutions, allowing solutions to emerge that we can't conceive. We yes. literally can't envision them because we can't, they're not, a, they're not within our frame of possibility. And so I have to like allow a frame, my frame to like, okay, I have no idea what's supposed to happen here, but I'm going to be open enough to let the ideas come in. And then like, I get to choose, you know, I get to move, I get to choose, I get to take action and, and learn and fail and learn and fail. And I just, I think and there's a really important skill that I notice I've noticed over the last few years has grown a lot, which is so, so, so there's an idea that comes in, which probably I, I can't fully recognize because you described that so beautifully that it hasn't been seen before and so I'm kind of sensing sensing a direction sensing something that needs to be done mm -hmm. um, and then for me what I find I do a lot and has been so valuable it's like I use all the senses that I can access which is an increasing amount and it's definitely way more than physical senses of course to constantly it's almost like i'm shaping constantly shaping this thing that's growing mm -hmm. at, and at the same time allowing it to shape itself it's a really weird like interesting dynamic that so the business love to that um we've just launched is very much one of those businesses where you can feel like it has so much of its own presence it's almost like it's guiding us but if we just say oh it's guiding us and we run along following it's not going to work i no, know that no, no. and so how do i it's like how do i guide it and let it guide me at the same time how do i guide it i see it as how do i guide the human bits how do i make it work here i don't know where it's coming from that you know this feeling of something that that is literally saying go this way look that way make me this shape make me do this because this is something I could do and no one's ever done that before. Right. So there's such a strong sense of the of the presence of that. And at the same time, such a strong sense of needing to be deeply engaged with the shaping of, of the way we can let that shape show up in the world and be recognized pe by people who may not speak this language we're speaking now, probably do really, because I, I think we all do, but you know, we don't all have language for it. We're all subtle beings as well. Right. And entrepreneurs especially have that capacity so easily and so often very intuitive. But um, 
it may not be as recognized and it may not be the common language. So how do we make things that people can recognize and adopt and say, yes, that's a solution that I want to be connected with at the same time as working in this kind of very ephemeral uh, creative process. It's very fascinating. You know, it is. And what occurs to me as you spoke was, um, you know, so this is some of the, the later sensing the subtle skills that come in um, when you've been practicing energy work for a long time is you have an ability, you know, when you've, when you're quiet enough, when you've created enough space inside um, and thank God for your work that eliminated the last of my PTSD, <laughs> as you know, um, so I got really quiet, but the, the ability to listen deeply and, you know, which is essential for whatever sensory apparatus we're building newly, you know, beyond our, our, our five senses and listening deeply to that which wants to emerge and be built and that which we have to take more steps toward. And there it is, that's the other part. And then, you know, go this direction the, this and the synchronicities that come in. So it's looking for all, I feel like it's looking for all of these things, not a, oh, I'm gonna get guidance every step of the way. And it's gonna be like ABC take, you know, five step process. It's not simple. It's it's really trusting. So faith is a good, is an important, significant element of this is having faith that things are going to happen in right timing. And not only will you gain instructions, you're going to notice if you're really present, and then you're going to hear the next thing, and then you're going to a synchronicity will happen and you'll meet the person. So all of these things, these are all new capacities that most of us don't have, you know, being so present that you notice everything in front of you, listening, being willing to listen and, and, and take that guidance as, as instruction, you know, if it, if it seems to make sense, and then noticing the indicators of synchronicity as, you know, magic as, as they show up in your lives. I think really literally only last five years have I even begun to pull in those capacities and use them um, in a way that like lends itself to forming tangible reality as opposed to I'm just out here in La La Land and having a great time because I'm spiritually adept and isn't this fun and wow. And ease I, of flow and grace. Yeah, I mean, live with flow and grace and wear my goddess clothing. Um, and, you know, but, but I'm, I'm interested in each of us, like bringing in our greatest gifts and offering it to the world to make a difference as best we can while living fulfilled lives and, you know, making money. And so to do all of that and turn it into tangible form, material reality, um, it seems to me that we're, we've got the, we have the capacities and it's a matter of using them all simultaneously so in a way i think what we've been developing the last few years is the capacity to grow our capacity the skills um the skills of capacity that enable you to keep growing capacity potentially growing new skills but especially it's that it's that ability to take on surprises new information to do things you don't know how to do of course, you could say that's always been part of business. We've, people have always had to do things they don't know how to do. But it, it, my sense is that it's really at a different level now, because one of the the biggest challenge I've I've had, and I, I would be willing to bet that many people have this challenge, is that there is so much information around that says, "Oh no, you shouldn't do it like that." Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about business, you're talking about responsibilities to many people, not only to yourself, and not only to maybe just one client like that my responsibility to a single client feels it's, it's you know it's a very simple relationship right that but but when it starts to be a business it's affecting many people simultaneously right that's very different and people will often tell me how it's supposed to be done i was in a conversation just a couple of days ago and somebody was saying oh and so now it's time to do this and this and this and it's like everything in me stood up and said hold on a moment 
that's not how we do things here. We need to actually really tune in and see what is it actually time for? Because we think that right. just yes. because we've launched yes. this, it's now time to do that. Right. But I'm not sure that it is. Have we even really looked at it? Have we actually reflected and sensed into what do we need to make this next step work? And one of the beautiful things, what I see is when we do it the old way, there is so much time wasting and so much like people wasting, Absolutely. feeling like, oh, I need these people to do these things, but you don't really. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so can we see, listen and see with much greater clarity so that I think that what we do will become much more, it will be much less bloated. Mm -hmm. um, much yeah, much more refined in a way and simplified. And people really will be doing their right thing. Like, well, I mean, our business love to is that's the purpose of it. And I really don't know how to do that yet. How do you create a business that, that's made out of people doing what they love to do? Um, it's a, I mean, it's an incredibly beautiful challenge. But if you start to think about it, you think, well, OK, yeah, but we've got to have all these people who do the things that have to be done. And, you know, in theory, you can say, well, we just find people who love to do bookkeeping. But I don't think it's as simple as that. I, I might, it's probably simpler in a way, but we're going to have to shape differently. So my response to that, because I think about this a lot, um, had this conversation earlier today, is that, you know, purpose lives within us. It's their fundamental facets of our being and then turn into doing as expression. And you can express them, you know, you can express your purpose in a million ways in lifetime. It doesn't have to be a particular um, orientation to career or a product or a business or a field of, you know, study. So I could show up and be a bookkeeper if I am able to do it in my way that fulfills my purpose. I, like I've never thought about bookkeeping, but I actually did end up doing accounting for my ex-husband's business and enjoyed it more than I ever imagined I would because I got to do it in my way. I, I like, I don't want to do that. And he's like, well, sorry, you have to. And I did it and I actually loved it. Like, it's like, I just learned how to be me in that task. So I don't, I don't think purpose is, you know, I have to change careers and I got to go find a new job. And it's, it's not that it's how do we show up as ourselves living the fullest expression of us in the moment and that can be in any task and especially if it's recognized among your peers and in the company the business and you are valued for the way you show up and people like get you and and honor that you are that i think we like that does not exist on the planet yet that i'm aware of at least outside of community some communities do that but companies and businesses don't. And I, I do feel like it is the next version of, you know, it's the next level version. Maybe that's the grow up piece is realizing that we each can contribute more grandly our innate version of ourselves, our purpose in wherever we are um, doing, you know, performing essential tasks that will make a difference in the world. And be fulfilled no matter what it is. I, I did used to think it was really strange that it didn't matter what job I was doing. I was having fun, but because I, I think I was essentially being myself and everything I ever did. And um, that contributed to, to just joy. So I don't know. That's yeah, no, that's, I, I think that's really important. We, I have many discussions about how we recognize and acknowledge and value and then reward the person who walks into maybe the office every single day with a smile and brightens everybody's life and is doing a job that may not be in our current valuation system recognized as being a particularly significant job. And the other thing that I think about a lot, this is a much more difficult one for me, is I just see that, let's say a CEO, you know, the, the people who sit at the top of our hierarchy, mm -hmm. if they had to walk into an office every single day that is filthy, dirty, because there are no cleaners, mm -hmm. right? Like, they couldn't function. No, 
they, you know, they just could not do the things that they have to do. So who's more important, the CEO or the cleaner? Of course, there isn't really an answer to that question. But when those that's the contrast. For some reason, it always comes to me as the CEO and the cleaner. And I think of the CEO without a cleaner. Now, the CEO might say, well, you know, there are cleaners everywhere. I can get another cleaner. But I don't think that's the point. I think the point is that being in a clean, beautiful environment is as much a part of being a CEO as what goes on inside your, your brain, for example, or um, even the decisions that you make. And so our valuation system, mm -hmm. uh, as it's currently expressed, which is what you were pointing to, doesn't recognize that. And this is what we are working on very much. This will be the next level. I agree with you in terms of businesses that I'm involved with is how do we actually start to do that for real? Yeah. And, and that and means real money. So valuing each person and their purpose, um, you know, whether it's the person who answers the phone or sits at the front desk and as a radiant, beautiful, welcoming being, like how important is that to the function of a business? I, I'm so I one of one of the facets of my purpose is to tell powerful truths. And as you can imagine, that was not received well in a number of my early career experiences, partly because I didn't do it well. And I didn't know how to do it well. And so I was rejected. But it was always, always led to catalytic decisions that changed the, the, the future of the company forever, always. And, you know, I would then be shunted out, rejected the, um, you know, the scapegoat. And I would look back and say, yeah, but look what happened, because I told the truth, and I may not be welcome anymore. But and, and so it's the, the things that we are here to do can't not do, all of us need to be rewarded and welcomed and honored and, and um, valued, you know, recompensated, I guess, for whatever it is that we do. Um, and and all, the, of this, trend. My, all of this seems to be growing up, like there's a, there's a new understanding of the relationship of these things is what feels like to me is coming out of this conversation like and in the transition to a world where that happens which still feels quite far away if yeah, you look at yeah, the level of does. scapegoating yeah. um, at the moment i was just sent an article this morning about somebody who was has whistleblown on the carbon credit system in australia wow. and you can already see you know how the justifications and the defenses are piling in it's really really hard to be somebody who tells the truth in today's environment but in the transition to a world where that's appreciated because i've made that transition i hate being criticized but i know that when i'm criticized it's really valuable mm -hmm. and i can i don't think any of us likes it mm -hmm. but i can I recognize when those things happen and everything in me is going oh no 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 please don't do this to me it's like sarah listen listen so i i know if i can learn it and you can learn it we can learn that culturally as well in time yeah. but but what i'm thinking about the transition i think this is a really important thing that's happening now is two things one is we need to be brave enough to still be that person who says or does the things that mm -hmm. as in your words you can't not do or you can't not say mm -hmm. and we also need to be the person who recognizes that when we do it in a way that is sacrificial to ourselves that there right. probably would have been a better way of doing right. it and the knowledge does exist now like i'm totally confident that i could help anybody in that situation with the stuff that i've been able to teach mm -hmm. people so for it not to be a such a not to be a bruising experience like that sure. we didn't know that when you were i didn't know you either when we were you were you were out there telling the truth to all these companies but that's interesting because we have better in a technology we have better knowledge now to manage ourselves in these transitioning times which can be really bruising but i think that that bruising i mean i talk a lot about karma i think if you deal with the the issues that you have i know that it's not going to be bruising in that way and so what an opportunity we have now to to be braver well and and in my mind that's also part of why we do need to know more precisely than not what are what are what it what is it that wants to be birthed through us what is our what i call you know our essential purpose our soul purpose in order to understand how we've been in the world doing what we can't not do or say 
and how to do it better. So I, I believe that we can refine the expressions of our purpose in the world. You know, I became a mediator because I realized finally, like, oh, telling truth is great, but don't, you know, go trying to decimate people while you're doing it. So, so I, you know, over time gained vast skills that helped me do what I do better, which we all can do, which is another form of growing up in order to be more available and engaged and enlivened by this innate version of ourselves in order to contribute more fully. Um, well, and I, so there's something very interesting in there, which I'm also noticing, um, I think is getting stronger or needs to get stronger where it's not, is that willingness to actually take yourself to value who you are and your purpose and what it is that you're about, whatever that is, it might be more tangible or less tangible, it doesn't really matter, to value that so much that you're willing to go and learn mediation when you realize that you keep burning your bridges and, right. and everybody scapegoats you. It's like, have the courage to say who I am and what I'm expressing in the world is so important to me. Not because I, I wanna be like this big person, but it's just important because there's nothing else that's really important in my life. This is me, this is how I show up. This is what makes me feel good. So important to me that I'm willing to recognize that I actually really messed that up. And rather than doing it again and again and again, I'm gonna do the very uncomfortable thing and go and learn something that will, will um, mitigate the mess that I've mm -hmm. created in the magnificence <laughs> of my purpose. <laughs> <laughs> over and over since childhood. Well, and yeah. for, me, for me, Sarah, that wasn't uncomfortable. I just naturally, like I notice I'm not doing something very well, like, oh, I want to learn to do that better. And, and so similarly, a facet of my purpose is to shine love on the shadow. And I've been called a shadow hunter, you know, another undeveloped capacity. <laughs> And so I, you know, like how many trainings have I taken to learn to find the things that are unconscious in us and to resolve them so that we can be more adept and, and uh, have meaningful lives. So I, you know, I do think, like you just said, I think it's so important that we understand what lives in us so we can become more, you know, live into our potential. Like, you know, you may be born with this purpose, but it's in its infancy stages until you learn how to develop the capacities and skills that will actually help you express it in the world and so you're going to go on developing capacity i imagine for the rest of our life right right and and i think what we are also describing is that you know the traditional forms of learning are great and wonderful and required they're not enough they're not adequate they're essential but inadequate and and so these new things that we're learning are also significant that have to do with tuning in to the, you know, the transpersonal, the multidimensional, everything that wants to be shown to us as possibility that we can't conceive with our pea brains. And also that is a part of the equation. It's, it's like we're, we're becoming, we're become, we're recognizing the the bigness of ourselves it feels to me like we're recognizing that we are so much more than we thought we were and that, and that we, there's so much information available to us subtle information there's so much help available to us there's so much of what it is that we really want to do is literally not held in our right. collective consciousness uh, uh, the sort of the collective of what we've achieved so far so that's a really interesting thing because I, I I understand why people study history so that we don't make the same mistakes. But I've also seen that in in human life, really, we never actually make the same mistake. It, we look like we make the same mistake, but it's always something new. And I feel that it's extremely important for us to now tune into what's possible for us, not what we don't want to do again. Um, that that kind of orientation towards this greater potential, to the mm -hmm. subtle information, to the multidimensional, to the support and help that seems to me to be radically available. Again, we could probably say it was always there, but it, if I look back over 20 years, oh my goodness, it's much more available. It's more available to people who don't know anything, I complete agree. beginners. It's like the veils are 
way thinner and i'm sure that's not a mistake so there's orientation towards that rather than orientation towards history and what mm -hmm. are the lessons that we can learn mm -hmm. feels especially potent at the moment yeah i'm i'm totally agree it it is it is unbelievable how much is available right now um that you know most of us don't even recognize is possible and yet it is you know it, it feels like it's the determination of our future will we pay attention yes and will we pay attention with capacity you, you, i'm so glad you brought that word in i've started using that word quite a lot as well recently and yeah will we will we listen deeply to what's possible for us and will we do we have the courage and the grit and the determination and the lightheartedness and light beingness like all of these things like very gritty and very light at the same time to actually bring that in and make it real share it with each other or will you know our alternative to, is to say things like i'm too small i'm not going to make a difference like that feels very old language mm -hmm. um i'm gonna i'm gonna put two additional words in there because you mm -hmm. I, I love that question you just asked i would add with the faith required that what is needed shows up at the right time and the second is to have awe at its unfolding I, I'm I am coming more, especially since my post COVID experience, I'm becoming more and more aware that I've I've had these capacities for a really long time and I've counted on them. And they've driven me forward and like it, la la la, it's, you know, it's all good. But it, it was literally the emergence of faith that in the right time, actually, everything does show up exactly as needed. I have to be patient in order for that faith to really kick in like, OK, I have faith doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow or the next day or even next month but it's going to happen exactly as it's intended and i am in awe of the unfolding of what needs what is intended to occur here um mm. th that has yeah. that has shifted everything for me to imagine because it keeps me in a state of wonder and um curiosity and uh, an awakening, you know, an opening to like, I have no idea, but this is so awesome, you know, just. <laughs> so that's really interesting. I, I personally don't use the word faith, but it was interesting for me to hear you define that because that helps me to see what's important for me. And, mm -hmm. and this is useful, I think, because then everyone can find their own expression. Right, right. So I, um, yes, that sense of wonder, like, just constantly being awake to the yeah, fact that yeah. so much more is happening that than I'm able to see or recognize and that it's so That's exquisitely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I that, you know, those times when my eyes are more open or my senses are more open, it's, it's so beautiful that the the wonder and the awe without question, because that keeps us also in this curiosity, mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. thinking, oh, yeah, I've got the answers. What goes with that for me? I realize is actually knowing. I know. What do you know? I, I know inside myself that those things that are, those things that we're looking for or we need or are the next steps, I know that they're there. I agree that it takes way more patience than I ever thought that I would have. And that doesn't mean it's really slow. The funny thing is it's really fast, actually, with patience. It's impatience that makes things slow. Yeah, I think sure. that's right. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. So I think we're actually saying the same thing. Just I'm sure we are. Different. And yeah, yes, yeah. and I'm not saying it to disagree. I'm saying it because no, there's, yeah. for me, there's a feeling when I say, when I touch, when I tap into that knowing, it's, it's like a, a kind of absolute solidity within me that enables me to have the patience to share the journey with other people who may at times be feeling nervous or maybe at times be saying oh my goodness what have we got to do now mm -hmm. that knowing sort of transmits and and holds things together uh -huh. in a very beautiful way and mm -hmm. I, i'm just appreciating that at the moment because i don't yeah. think i'd valued it as much mm -hmm. as i do right now because we're talking about it and i and i think we're we're talking about exactly the same thing and i know the word faith has some religious connotation and is hard for some people to stomach um it, it for me it helps so for me egoically knowing 
connotes so, you know, this human self and the knowing that you're speaking to is much more than that. And so I use the word faith because it transcends me. It, it's extended yes. beyond my, you know, my sort of human beingness. And it keeps me alive in that broader, you know, much more cosmic awareness. And so it just extends my awareness. It like pulls me out, knowing pulls me in. Just, you know, it's a- it's Yes, a, and I think that's exactly- well it's so interesting uh, yeah and I think that that's exactly what what I need that mm, pulling I need that pulling in faith for me still has I think because I did a lot of faith stuff when I was younger not religious yeah. um, mm. but with energy work and for mm. me faith um, just for, I think this is just for me has an element of hope in it mm. Um, mm. and mm. The, the knowing it's not certainty when people use the word certainty I always find that really like you can't really be certain of anything uh -huh. but that knowing has an element there's a, it's really difficult to describe but it it does touch into the that absolutely unchanging in a way that in a way that is still practical I don't know it's that's a it's a beautiful thing we could you probably know, talk for a while and Sarah, and I this. also I, what I love about this is it's so powerful each of us to get to that very granular understanding of how we each best function in the world. And I think to some extent, that's also something that's occurring to me is that like, what, like each, you know, each sort of new awakening, new revelation that comes to me, it's like, it's just the tiniest little shift in orientation, like I, like a half a degree, like, oh, but it makes all the difference in the world when I can see it from there. And I get so excited, like, oh my gosh, what just opened up? And so having that distinct awareness of ourselves and how we function in the world, like what is, what is in this beingness that's, you know, transpersonal called Holly and, and how do I function and how can I best serve because I'm fully alive as me, you know, yeah. that for me is purpose. Like I want to show up like unabashedly with determination that everything I can possibly offer, I can bring to the table. And I think that discernment is actually, it's a really beautiful place for us to land at the end so that we don't land with an answer. We learn, we land with each of us. This, this is also part of where we are now. We can't now go and teach courses about faith or teach courses about knowing or deep what this, I mean, we can, but really the, the goal of that is for people to find their own expression right. and a conversation about a word like we just had actually becomes such a beautiful exploration and it never matters whether we fully understand each other mm -hmm. but what happens is we deepen our own experience right. of who i am in relation with who you are mm -hmm. and the next conversation we have will be enriched by the conversation that we've just had yeah beautiful well, I love well you that's so a nice place to end. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to be doing this with you. Yeah, well, we're going to do more. So um, I'm just going to say a very temporary thank you, I think, Holly. And um, I'm really curious to see where the next conversation will go because it it's so open in this place where it's so interesting because in many ways the answers the things that that need to be done are perhaps quite straightforward you know we know that we need to just make this planet a safe place for nature and human beings we know we need to make it a place where we can thrive we can use all the language for that and it really doesn't change that much it's really true mm -hmm. it's really true but how we do that what it takes in us to enable that to happen in a way that feels good to us right um that it that's where I think we're, we're very much on the on the cutting edge or the leading edge of our own lives and it's a very beautiful place to be so it's, it's wonderful to share this with you I'm honored I'm I mean I, I know that we're both going to grow exponentially from this conversation so thank you thank you, <laughs> thank you.